All right guys, today we're gonna be working on the Champion Blower and Forge Drill Press uh, ratchet wheel. And uh, we're gonna be boring out that hole, drill that one, and drill and tap that one. And I almost screwed up that part working on that part right there. All right everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. All right guys, if you like seeing old equipment being restored, brought back from the scrap pile, uh, why don't you click on the subscription and ring the bell notification and that way you won't miss out on anything. Alright guys, well the, uh, the foundry was supposed to put a core in here but uh, they forgot so I've got a, a piece of cast iron in there instead of having a core which would have been a hole for me but uh, you know, they, things happen. So. Take the old uh, parting tool, we're gonna saw a good bit of this here off and then we'll face this thing off. We gotta drill a hole and put a hole here. Or, uh, yeah, anyway, been a long day. All right, there it is. Remember, make sure to take your iron. You know, purely because I have this here, uh, I'm going to set this thing up so I can use it to, you know, just measure off my depth of cut each time here. I think it'll just make it a little bit easier. Let's get this in there kind of close where we should be starting about. All right, we've got a reasonable flat spot there. I think we can drill that now. All right, let's start off with a center drill. All righty. That ought to get her going. All right, there we go. That's all the way through. Before I make this next pass here, I just want to stop to harass a buddy of mine, Mitchell Green. Uh, he's got a motorcycle part he keeps wanting me to work on, but he can't seem to bring it to me. So I, I told him I would harass him here on camera. But I'm all set up to do your part, you know, whenever you're, whenever you're free enough to give me your piece. All right, now let's go up to the taper shank drills. I got these from a used equipment supplier next city over, and they uh, they sharpen them up before they resell them. Don't we all like a freshly sharpened drill bit, huh? All right, well, I believe this is the biggest drill bit I've got in the shop. Let's see how it goes here. Right. Oh, <laughs> did you guys see that? I bet that's hot as all heck, but there's the remainder of our core. And we got lucky and it cut it right off pretty much. There's a little bit of it on there, but it's a sheet metal now, which is good because we're about to go to the boring bar, so. All right, so before I start boring, I'm gonna face this thing off just so my boring bar don't have to go through that scale. Uh, I don't have a carbide boring bar. I probably should get some, but uh, you know, we're a poor shop here. <laughs> anyway, we'll face off what's left of this little lump right here and then we'll get to work on the big part of it. Getting kind of close here. I want to see sort of what kind of a finish I'm getting. Well, that's really rough. I'm going to see what, uh, what are the kind of cutters I got around here. Maybe I can get a better finish on this thing. That's kind of a bearing surface, so it needs to look pretty good and smooth. 
I found a nice round nose tool here. Uh, hopefully this will give me a little bit better finish. better but we're sure chattering a lot let's uh, see if we can play with the speed That's a much better cut there. Of course, I didn't even change the uh, setting here. Let's see what happens. We'll take uh, take some five thousandths passes and see what happens. All right, that's a pretty reasonable looking finish. Kind of switched down to only taking a couple thousands and going real nice and slow. That seemed to prove things a lot. Yeah, I think we're going to leave it at that. All right, now on to the boring. Got my boring bar set up, and I took a took a little calibration cut on there. And uh, we're right about three quarters of an inch, and we got to go to uh, an inch and a quarter, so we got a really long ways to go. So we'll probably be fast forwarded right now. All right, well, let's have a look, see how close we're getting here. Well, that's showing. Just about one inch, 100 on the nose. Well, I guess we gotta take out 150. All right, just to double check my machine here. I dialed in 20 thousandths. So we should be, we've cut about 40 out, and actually it cut 50, but uh, at least uh, it's, that's right, what we're showing. And one inch, 155 thousandths. All right, let's take a little more. All right, only showing about eight thousands left, so I'm gonna dial in to cut six and see how close that is. Well, it's showing two thousands away from the mark. Let's see what the part tells us here. Well, yeah, it's starting, but uh, I guess we're going to need at least that two thousandths. All right, so the next steps here, we've got to uh, drill a quarter inch hole here, and then uh, this right here, this thing gets drilled out to uh, 5 16 18 see if I can get that into the frame you can see the little boss that sticks out right here yeah so 
we'll have to change the setup on the drill press for that. And I got all the tools I think I'm going to need here. I got a small center drill just to get this sort of piloted, help try to keep it on center. A center punch to at least get that started more or less on center. A uh, quarter inch drill bit. And I got uh, some stuff out of my mill uh, hold down equipment that'll let us clamp this to the table. And I got my 5 16 tap. It's a 5 16 18. And this is a 17 64 drill bit, which is the uh, tap drill size for that. So let's get everything all set up. All right, so whenever I know I have to drill a hole in something that, you know, like I was working off of an existing part, well, I left this hole kind of with a little divot so I could kind of find it again. Uh, although it didn't come out very good, some metal got in there, so it's that's not a very good hole to start in. So at any rate, I'm going to kind of just eyeball center here of this. And uh, give it a little tap. Gave us something. Give it another one, give it a better mark. There we go. That should be enough to get that center drill to start in. I'll take our hardware here. Slip that into there. And this has kind of got a couple of feet on it on that side, so put that side down. This is the right size wrench. Hey, look at that. All right. I'm going to have to kill this here, but I want it to be pretty snug. That ain't going to go nowhere. Whenever you work on the drill press, everybody's always sort of gets lulled into being, you know, pretty relaxed about just holding onto a part. But sometimes this stuff, it'll grab a hold of it, and, you know, you're just not going to be able to stop it. Uh, you know what? Let me. I'm gonna move that over towards the center a little more, so I don't have to move my table. But I think it may get into the way of the handle here if I if I do that. All right, that's on there, good and snug. Get our center drill in there then. For you guys that are kind of new to metalworking, uh, generally speaking, you don't need to put lubrication on cast iron because part of its makeup is uh, graphite, and graphite is a is a very good lubricant. So it's one of the reasons cast iron is so easy to mill. I think we're out of travel there, but that's all right. That's good enough to get it started. This should be pretty good. some more this key is not exactly the right key for this chuck so sometimes I think I got it good and tight and I don't there we go. 
we go. All right, that's it for that setup. All right, I thought I was gonna be able to loosen this thing up and rotate this table 90 degrees so we could just clamp this to the face of this, this uh, table here, but I don't know. It, I can't find a wrench that's the right size to fit this thing, and you really can't get a socket on it just because the way it's in there. Uh, kind of not the best design. It is possible to loosen it, but uh, I just don't have the means to get it done. So we'll just put this in the vise. We're not drilling a gigantic hole here. I'll have to figure out what size that is and find a wrench I can use to... Maybe I'll just hang it over here. Anyway, so we're going to center punch this here. And we're going we're gonna to run a, a small drill down there just to kind of get the center of that. All right. Give it a center punch. If I can't fix this, maybe get a smaller drill and try to get a better center started. Alright, I've got a smaller drill and I, I put a new center punch mark in here. Hopefully I can stay in it this time. That's about as far as I can go with that drill. Well, this hole is, I think I can make this work, but uh, well, we're probably gonna have to go down in, in bolt size. It's, it's too far down the hill. Uh, yeah. Gotta be more careful doing this stuff, I suppose. Well, nobody's perfect, but you know, learn from my mistakes if, if you don't, that way you won't have to learn from your own, I guess. So I'm gonna see if, uh, I forget what size it is. I think a letter F or something is the tap drill size for a quarter 20. So we'll probably have to end up going with a quarter 20 instead of 5 16 Anyway, uh, let me investigate that right now. All right, sorry about that. It's a, it's a number seven is the tap drill size for a quarter 20. So I'm all set up for that now. I think we still got enough meat to make that happen, but even yet it's still a little bit on the small side. You know, there's going to be kind of thin material here. All right. Let's get this out of the way and we'll get our tap set up here. All right. Wish me luck here. to salvage that. I need to get myself some stub drills or something so I can, I don't know, maybe you guys can offer me some suggestions. What's a good way? Because this is an angled surface here. 
just a few degrees, two or three degrees, but boy, it sure wanted to track down the hill. Luckily, I, I caught it in time enough to at least be able to even get that. Oops. Handle falling out of the tap wrench. All right, well, we've got our quarter inch hole drilled here. This is a inch and a quarter plus a little bit of clearance. And then uh, we've got that quarter 20. It's supposed to be 5 16 18, but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of a bumbling fool here the last couple times I've done anything, it seems. Anyway, that fits in there pretty good. Set screw, that should be more than enough, I think, to hold that on there. So. Let's go see if we can set this thing up on the post drill, see how it's all looking, how it's coming along. All right, well, this is starting to look like it's coming along. Uh, I think there's still probably one more piece that I'm missing here because uh, if we if we turn this thing and this this device is meant to rotate this nut here right so it's pushing down and there's going to be a lot of resistance up so what's going to keep it from just doing that right so there must be i see there's this brass ring right around here there must be some kind of a sleeve that should be there uh to act as a as a, a bearing and also you know a thrust surface and i don't i don't, know, I don't see any spots where a screw's been on it, but it looks like somebody's polished it on it too, so maybe that's been removed, but uh, I'll have to investigate that. Anybody that's got one of these, uh, Mr. Evil Twin X, maybe he can enlighten me about his. Is there a, a part here? And if so, if you could, boy, it would be great if you could take a video of it or something, show me how, it's, how it should look. Even just a photo would probably would work. But that's coming along, and this here, I think I've probably shown this here before, but this flywheel, uh, this is the right size and everything like that, even made for that shaft. Although this one came off a different one, it's got a, it's got a crank over here. Mine's supposed to have a, a crank on this side. But, uh, you know, this would actually probably would work. But anyway, this is just a loner to uh, make a pattern out of again. And then uh, we'll be having to drill that thing somehow. That's uh, quite a bit bigger than I think I can do on my little Atlas lathe. Uh, if I get the south bend going, then that would probably work there. Probably this job could be done on a drill press, I would imagine. Yeah, back in the old days, a lot of the stuff, probably this whole frame was probably set up and most all the work was probably all done on a drill press. You know, they probably had some kind of a jig and then they would just drill all the holes and pass it to the next guy and he would do the next part all right guys i hope you enjoyed seeing how this uh this part was put back together and uh why don't you click on the old horizontal mill here and you'll get subscribed you can see any videos that i've got coming up and check out the uh the other ones that are showing up here at the bottom